On October 27, Tikkanagan Child and Family Services invites you to participate in Dress Purple Day. On Dress Purple Day, we celebrate the community that cares for families and share the message that help is available and no one is alone. Dress Purple Day is also an opportunity to remind adults about the important role they play in supporting vulnerable children, youth, and families. This includes every adult's legal duty to call their local Children's Aid Society if they have a concern about the safety or well-being of a child or youth. Go purple on October 27 and use the hashtag IDressPurpleBecause. For more information on protecting children and helping families, visit Tikkanagan.org. On October 27th, I'm asking everyone to wear purple on Dress Purple Day. This is in support of Ontario's Children's Aid Societies. Together, we can help raise awareness about the community's responsibility to look out for our children and youth. I know the pandemic has made things harder for many Ontario families, which is why it is more important than ever that our friends, family and neighbours know that help is available no matter what challenge they're facing. Let's lift families and young people up during these difficult times. So remember to wear purple on October 27th to show your support. Wajie, Buju, you are now listening to Kakana and Weak, everyone together on TikTok Radio, hosted by Tikkanagan Child and Family Services. We appreciate you tuning in to our weekly program every Tuesday and Thursday at 2 p.m. on Wawate Radio. Tikkanagan is a community-based child and family well-being agency rooted in and accountable to the First Nation communities we serve. We are here because we want to protect our children, help our families, and nurture our communities. Bullying and cyberbullying is an issue in our communities that has affected our children and youth for too long. It is time to come together, to work together, to teach our next generation how to teach each other right and fair. This unified message, supported by our community partners, shows that everyone who has the best interest of the children and youth are here to support them. Keep them safe, provide resources, and be an ally. Everybody deserves a safe space, whether it be online, in schools, or at home, and the right to feel supported. Bullying impacts the psychological, emotional, physical, and social aspects of a child's life. By working together with Tikkanagan and other partners who are based in First Nation communities, we are sending a message to children and adults that we care about them. It also shows that there is no place for bullying in our communities. Most importantly, we are putting a solution in their hands. Tikkanagan Child and Family Services has joined forces with Nishinaabe Aski Police Services, the Ontario Provincial Police, the Sulaco First Nations Health Authority, and Nishinaabe Aski Nation to raise awareness about the devastating effects of bullying and cyberbullying on children and youth. The anti-bullying campaign set to launch on October 19, 2020 in more than 30 First Nations communities is a component of Mamau Ashki Pimajuan to Tikkanogan's prevention program. In addition to working with its community partners, Tikkanogan is also working with schools in each community to reinforce the vital role educators have in preventing bullying and supporting children who are victims of bullying behaviors. The Mamau Ashki Pimajuan framework is about working together to learn new life skills. The anti-bullying campaign will commence next week with the launching of a two-part contest targeting First Nation children and youth grades 1 to 12. The first part of the contest will invite children and youth to submit a name slash slogan for the anti-bullying and anti-bullying campaign. The deadline for submissions is October 30th. The second part of the contest will invite children and youth to submit a logo for the campaign to complement the winning slogan. Each contest will be judged by a panel of First Nation youth. Once the the slogan and logo have been decided, Tikkanagan and its partners will embark upon a round of educational activities in schools and communities to raise awareness about bullying and anti-bullying and the role and the responsibility of the community members in prevention of bullying. Tikkanagan has developed a resource guide for service workers, educators, and other community professionals that explains the effects of bullying and cyberbullying on children and youth and what people of all ages can do to prevent this destructive behavior. 
Additional resources, contest cards and rules, and updates on the campaign can also be found at www.tickenoggin.org. Tickenoggin Child and Family Services invites you to join them today for Dress Purple Day. Help celebrate a community that cares for families and share the message that help is available and no one is alone. Take this opportunity to remind adults about the role they play supporting vulnerable children, youth, and families. It's every adult's legal duty to contact your local Children's Aid Society if concerned about the safety or well-being of a child or youth. Go purple today and use the hashtag IDressPurpleBecause. For information, please visit Tickenoggin.org. Some facts about bullying. Bullying can occur anywhere at any time. It happens at school, in the classroom, outside in the schoolyard, after school, at public events, and even online. Kids who are bullied can feel like they are different, powerless, unpopular, and alone. Kids bully others for many reasons. They may want to copy their friends, think that bullying will help them fit in, think that they are better than the children that they are bullying. Bullying can make them sad, lonely, and nervous. Bullying can make you feel sick, have problems at school, and it might make you bully other kids. Bullying is never okay. Those who bully use power to hurt people. Kids who are bullied have a hard time standing up for themselves. When kids see bullying, they may not know what to do. They may feel depressed or worried. They may be absent from school because they don't feel safe. They may join in or stay silent so they won't be bullied themselves. They may stand up to the bully, but the best thing to do is to get an adult who can stop the bullying on the spot. Risk Factors to Bullying No single factor puts children at risk of being bullied or bullying others. Bullying happens anywhere. Every child is at risk of being bullied or becoming a bully. Some children are at greater risk of being bullied than others. Children with disabilities, LGBT youth, and children teased or perceived of being different are especially at risk. Generally, children who are bullied are perceived as different from their peers, such as being overweight or underweight, wearing glasses or have different clothing, being new to school, or being unable to afford what the kids consider cool. Children who are bullied are perceived as weak or unable to defend themselves. Children who are bullied are depressed, anxious, and have low self-esteem. Children who are bullied are less popular than others who have friends. Children who are bullied do not get along with others, seen as annoying or provoking, or antagonized by others for attention. Children who bully others have often been bullied at home or feel a sense of powerlessness. Children who bully others are often aggressive and or easily frustrated. Children who bully others have less parental involvement or have issues at home. Children who bully others think badly of others. Children who bully others have difficulty following the rules. Children who bully others view violence as a positive way. Remember, those who bully others do not need to be stronger or bigger than those they bully. The power imbalance can come from a number of sources, popularity, strength, cognitive ability, and the children who bully may have more than one of these characteristics. Indicators of bullying. There are many warning signs that may indicate that someone is being affected by bullying either being bullied or bullying others. Recognizing the warning signs is an important first step in taking action against bullying. Not all children who are bullied or are bullying others ask for help. It is important to talk with children who show signs of being bullied or bullying others. 
These warning signs can also point to other issues or problems, such as depression or substance abuse. Talking to the children can help identify the root of the problem. Indicators that may suggest a child is being bullied. Unexplained injuries. Loss or destroyed clothing, books, electronic, or jewelry. Frequent headaches or stomach aches. Feeling sick or faking illness. Change in eating habits, like suddenly skipping meals or binge eating. Kids may come home from school hungry because someone has stolen their lunch. Difficulty sleeping or frequent nightmares. Declining in grades, loss of interest in schoolwork, or not wanting to go to school. Sudden loss of friends or avoidance of social situations. Feeling of helplessness or decreased self-esteem. Self-destructive behaviors such as running away from home, harming themselves, or talking about suicide. If you know someone who is being bullied, don't ignore the problem. Get help right away. Why kids don't ask for help. Most kids don't tell adults when they are being bullied because... Bullying can make a child feel helpless. Kids may want to handle it on their own to feel in control again. They may fear of being seen as weak. Kids may fear backlash from the kids who bully them. Bullying can be humiliating experience. Kids may not want adults to know what is being said about them. Whether true or false, they may feel also fear that adults will judge them or punish them for being weak. Kids who are bullied may already feel socially isolated. They may feel like no one cares or could understand. Children may fear being rejected by their peers. Friends can help protect kids from being bullied and kids can fear losing their support. By the numbers, research shows that half of all children are bullied at some point during the school year. While verbal abuse was the most common form of bullying, 44% have reported being physically threatened. The average bullying episode lasts only 37 seconds, but the effects on the child's self-esteem can last a lifetime. Only 1 in 10 victims of cyberbullying tell their parents. On October 27, Tekanagan Child and Family Services invites you to participate in Dress Purple Day. On Dress Purple Day, we celebrate the community that cares for families and share the message that help is available and no one is alone. Dress Purple Day is also an opportunity to remind adults about the important role they play in supporting vulnerable children, youth, and families. This includes every adult's legal duty to call their local Children's Aid Society if they have a concern about the safety or well-being of a child or youth. Go purple on October 27 and use the hashtag IDressPurpleBecause. For more information on protecting children and helping families, visit Tikkanagan.org. On October 27th, I'm asking everyone to wear purple on Dress Purple Day. This is in support of Ontario's Children's Aid Societies. Together, we can help raise awareness about the community's responsibility to look out for our children and youth. I know the pandemic has made things harder for many Ontario families, which is why it is more important than ever that our friends, family and neighbours know that help is available no matter what challenge they're facing. Let's lift families and young people up during these difficult times. So remember to wear purple on October 27th to show your support.